Hello, welcome to Horizon at Home. I'm Erica Allen, I'm one of the pastors of Horizon. And I just wanna take this moment to say thank you so much for joining us this morning as we discover the new normal that God has for us right now in this moment. It is time, it is time for the old things to pass away and for God's new normal to be what guides and directs our lives. Before I get started this morning, I wanna talk about what happened on Tuesday in our nation's capital. Never ever have I seen the brokenness that is permeating America like on full display like it was on Tuesday. In moments when my TV and my social media feed are full of that kind of chaos and that kind of news, I found it to be helpful to engage enough that I know and am informed about what's going on and to retreat from that and to spend some quiet time with God, hearing what it is God wants to say to me and to God's people. And I kept clinging to my very favorite thing that Jesus said in the Bible. It's recorded in John chapter 10, verse 10. It says, the thief comes to steal and kill and destroy. But I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. As many of us were feeling hopeless and helpless, weary and tired this week, as we were feeling empty this week, it, it was so obvious to us that there is a thief that is stealing and killing and destroying in America. And it is so obvious that Jesus offers something different. He says the thief comes to steal and kill and destroy. And then he uses this word, but, which means I'm going to offer something. I'm going to say something that is drastically different than what has come before. He says, I have come to offer life and offer it to the full. We are not helpless. We are not hopeless. There is a world longing for light and love and a new way of doing things. And it is time that we start acting like it. This Jesus will not steal. This Jesus will not lead us to kill. This Jesus will not lead us to destroy. This Jesus will lead us to life that is full full for all. And it is time in 2021 for us to start standing up and walking in that way. It is time we get real about the Jesus that we follow that has that to offer. And so this morning, I, I just want to say maybe your normal for 2020 was to spend more time watching the news and less time praying. Maybe your normal for 2020 was to spend all your time holed up in your room, ignoring any current events and ignoring anything going on in the world and just clinging to Jesus. I'm, I'm here to say the new normal for 2020 is to recognize that there is a thief. It is coming to steal and kill and destroy. And Jesus offers something different. It is time we cling to that fullness of life that Jesus offers. And it is time we start being real about what that looks like in the world around us. It is time, Horizon, for us to shine light and ignite change. It it's time for us to stand up. It is time for us to stand up against racism and sexism and homophobia and all of the things in the world that is killing and stealing and destroying us. It is time for us to start standing up against poverty and addiction and all of the things that are stealing and killing and destroying. And it is time that we start offering to the world what it is Jesus offers to us, life and life to the full. It is time for us to shine light and it is time for us to ignite change. Months ago, months ago, we had looked at what we were going to study and explore for worship this morning as we talk about the new normal that God has for us. And, and, and what we want to talk about is our relationship with money. And, and I want to start by saying this, Hebrews chapter 13 is where we were drawn. And these words have never been more important than they are right now in this moment. Hebrews chapter 13, a pastor is writing to people who are confused about how to be the people of Jesus moving forward. And this is what he says to them, keep on loving each other as brothers and sisters. Keep on loving each other as brothers and sisters. If you don't know how to move forward this week, start there. Love each other as brothers and sisters. Do not forget to offer hospitality to strangers. For by doing so, some people have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those in prison as if, as if you were fellow prisoners. Remember those who are locked up and chained up right now as if you were locked up 
and chained up. And, and remember those who are mistreated as if you yourselves were suffering. For people who are suffering right now, it is important that we can recognize and understand and empathize with them. Remember those who are, are mistreated as if you yourselves are suffering. Marriage should be honored by all and the marriage bed kept pure. For God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. And then verse 5, listen to this really closely, guys. Keep your lives free from the love of money. And be content with what you have because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence in response to that, the Lord is my helper and I will not be afraid. My least favorite thing to talk about is money. I grew up with a single mom and, and she did the very best she could and finances somehow always meant she did a great job ma managing our finances, but there was never a moment in my life as a young child that I was not worried when, when we talked about money. It made me anxious and stressed out and I was always scared. I've never quite gotten over those feelings. Every time we talk about how much college costs, how much graduate school costs, how much rent costs, how much mortgage costs, how much car payment costs, every time we have those conversations, I get nervous and anxious and scared. Maybe some of you have a hard time talking about your finances and about money because like me, you live your lives anxious about money. That may be your normal, that you are anxious and awkward about conversations about finances. I'm here to say God is ready for us to have a new normal in 2021. We can begin to believe that money and finances are not bad or awkward, but our relationship with money and our possession and our stuff and finances, that can be toxic. And God offers us a blueprint for living our lives free of that toxicity that comes when we love money and our relationship with our stuff too much. So this morning, before we go any further, God has given us the blueprint for having a healthy relationship with our finances. And that blueprint is this. God says, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. And if your mission, if your why, if your deepest clinging is to the God who loves you, who will never leave you and never forsake you, if your mission is about sharing that, that God who offers hope and love and light through Jesus Christ to the world, if everything you do is about that, it will change your relationship with your money. If you are about sharing with the world, a hopeless and dark world that is suffering right now, if you are about loving your brothers and sisters, if you are about offering hospitality to strangers, if you are about loving people who are in prison, if you are about caring about and meeting the needs of those who suffer, then you will be sharing light and love and hope. And it will change your relationship with your money and your stuff. Get real with your relationship with God. Let that be what guides every aspect of your life because it will change how you deal with your money. Be about letting God shine light and ignite change in your life and be absolutely 110% committed to sharing that with the world. And the first way that you can, you'll start to see things change in your life is you're going to be content with what it is that you have. Be content with what you have. A lot of times we're moving so fast, we're doing so much, we're worried about so much that we forget. We forget to be content with what it is that we have. In 2020, in the, in the wake of the COVID crisis, so many of us looked at the future. I'm, I'm saying this because I care about you. So many of us looked at the future with our finances and we began to be worried. We began to be worried. And I learned from 2020 to be content with what it is that I have. My old normal was to accumulate, accumulate, accumulate. I need more stuff. I need more clothes. I need more vacation time. I need more. I need more. I need more. And when, when you're free from that, you, you're content with what it is that you have. Suddenly, a walk in the state park that was $3 for an afternoon was as, as meaningful in my life, as, as life-giving, as renewing, and, re, and, and giving me strength and, and new perspective and fresh air. It was just as refreshing as any vacation that I had ever taken and spent a, spent a ton of money on. 
Be content with what it is that you have. God has given us this beautiful place that we live in. Spend time outdoors loving the creation. Spend time with the friends and the people that are around you. Be content with what it is you have and quit worrying about accumulating so much stuff. Be content with what you have. If you want to live your life free from the love of money, the second thing you're going to have to do is watch out for debt. If you keep piling debt on, if you keep getting new stuff that's expensive and maybe a little bit beyond what you can pay for, you are going to spend all of your time worrying and thinking about how to pay off debt instead of worrying about how you're going to shine the light of Jesus and ignite the change of God's justice and peace in this world that needs it. God needs people who are free from debt because those people are free to shine light and ignite change. Watch out for the debt in your life. I know, I know that when we paid off my student loans, when I got aggressive about paying off those student loans, I was able to live my life more free. It is not, it is not a coincidence that as soon as I paid off my undergraduate degrees, I got a scholarship to go to seminary, to become a pastor, to shine light and ignite change. Those things aren't coincidences. When we free ourselves from a life of debt, we are opened up to a life that allows us to shine the light of God Ignite the change of Jesus in the world. Watch out for your debt. And the third thing that God would, would say to us is to trust, actually trust that God will never leave us and forsake us. And one way that we can do that is throughout the Bible is to trust 10% of our income with God. I know this is a touchy subject and people are, 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 are weirded out sometimes about a conversation about tithing, but, but there's a reason God asks us to give 10%, to trust 10% of our money to the church. And it's because God has given the church the unique ability to invest in a new day. That's the mission, the vision of Horizon, is to work with God for a new day. It's about investing in a future where God's light will shine and God's change will be ignited. What does it look like for us to trust 10% of our income with God? And 90% of it, you get to continue to do those things God's asked us to do, right? Watch out for debt, use it to shine light and ignite change, all of those things. But what does it look like for us to give 10%, to trust 10% of our money to a God who will never leave us or never forsake us? This is, this is what happened when COVID first hit, and I realized it was going to be more than just two or three weeks of us not meeting, Horizon not meeting in person for worship, I looked at Chris and I said, our church is going to go under. We're going to go under. There is no way we will survive this. And you all, you all taught me what it looks like to not cling so tightly and to trust God with your finances because you kept giving faithfully and generously to Horizon. And do you know what that freed us up to do? We weren't meeting every week in a middle school for worship anymore, but you know what we were doing? We were feeding healthcare workers on the darkest and longest nights of their lives. We were offering peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and food to people who didn't know where their next meal was going to come from. We offered a small group opportunity to people who were scared to death about what the future offered for them because we had the infrastructure and the systems in places because of your generous giving to offer the hope and light of Jesus to the world. We baptized people in the middle of a pandemic. Churches aren't saying that. We were able to offer the new life that Jesus has for all of us. We were able to offer that to people who were baptized and who are living new and different lives because you were generous and you trusted God with your finances. The normal thing is to cling, to cling tightly. I did it. I wanted to do it. I was like, Chris, we got to watch our finances in these months. And instead, we trusted our money to a God who shined light and ignited change in a community when they needed it most. Our relationship with money can be help, healthy and helpful to the world if our relationship with God is where it is supposed to be. The pastor of... Uh, of these people, he looks, this pastor looks at the people and he says to them, God will never leave you or forsake you. And he says, this is what our response needs to be. Say out loud, the Lord is my help and I will not be afraid. Maybe what's guided you in, in, in your normal life before in the old normal was it that you operated out of fear your money, your relationship with your stuff, all of those things, you can see that. 
What does it look like right now to say out loud what has been what people who follow Jesus have 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 said for over 2000 years the Lord is my help and I will not be afraid. Say it out loud right now the Lord is my helper and I will not be afraid. This morning that sentence can change your life. Because there is a Jesus who wants something new for you and for our world. It is time. It is time for us to get real about shining light and igniting change because we are not afraid because we know where our help comes from. It comes from the Lord. If you don't know that this morning, I I just invite you to pray with me in just a few moments and say, God, I want you to be my helper and I want to quit living my life afraid. If your old normal was was you loved Jesus and you wanted to follow him, but but you didn't always trust God to be your helper, you didn't always trust that God would never forsake you or leave you, pray with me too. We can live a new normal in 2021, one where we are not afraid, one where we are free to shine light and ignite change, one where we are free to love our brothers and sisters, one where we are free to watch God alleviate the suffering of the people around us, one where we are free to see people freed from lives where they are locked up and imprisoned. The Lord is my help. I will not be afraid. Pray with me. God, I pray right now for people who've said that for the first time ever. Help them take steps right now to live the new normal and the new life that you have for them. I pray for those who said it for the first time in a long time, who got got used to living a normal God that's not working anymore and who are ready to live their lives free of fear, their relationship with their money and, and everything else in their lives. They're ready for it to be about shining your light and igniting your change because of the light and change you offer to them in their lives. I pray for all of us who are longing for a new normal. God, give it to us. Use us for your new day, for your new normal that you are creating. Use us to shine your light and ignite your change. Thank you for loving us and for never leaving us or forsaking us.